Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to the Mask of the Rose, where I think I've put together a theory that kind of works. Like we finally have the the motives and actions here to craft a version of this thing that kind of makes sense. A surface dwelling relative of the Landau sought money. David wanted to inherit an estate and the funds that would otherwise come to him. Um, that's a little it's a little strange, but whatever. Uh, but the surface dwelling relative of the Landau's had financial reasons not to want David to leave the Neath. Um, and asked him not to. David began planning a journey back to the surface anyway. I don't know if ask David to stay below is really... Like, probably they wouldn't have done that, right? Probably upon realizing that he wanted to come up, they would have just headed to the murder plot. But then, like, you know, they wanted not to inherit. So they sent him a Landau, uh, sent the Landau's a letter infused with a deadly toxin. It's interesting that it is a she. I'm wondering if this is, like, a specific relative and we just, it's Mark's surface dweller because we just don't know the person. We haven't gotten enough of the family story yet, perhaps. But this is something that I feel like we can at least work with a little bit. It's an idea. And one thing I really like about that and the way I started constructing that was I was like, okay, who could I implicate in this? Who I won't be sad if they end up going to jail <laughs> or, you know, whatever else. Uh, and this is, this is what I came up with. So I guess let's maybe have some words with the Landau's about it and then maybe go tell Harjit. Um, actually, we cannot talk to the Landau's about this in any meaningful way. <laughs> well, then I'm just going to go dump it directly on, on our man here. Let's see how it goes. Let's see what he does about it. Another thing about this is that it's actually going to be extremely difficult to investigate which might be to our benefit. We'll see. Doesn't much matter what uh, what I'm wearing for this particular task. And if I bring Harjit a case that can't be brought to trial, he'll tell me that quickly so I can get something else done today. Yeah, this is my only concern is that like the the un uninvestigability, uninvestigability, you know, of this one might mean that it's not worth trying to tell the court. You know, the court's just going to be like, well, can you prove that? No, of course you can't. Okay, off with his head. Otherwise, telling him might lead straight away to an arrest. That's not going to happen. Well, so it doesn't really matter what we wear, but, you know, it's just... Winnie, it's good to see you. Yeah, um, I think we should probably just go right, right to the point, yeah? This is more than a social call. I believe I know what happened and why. When I start to explain, however, Harjit stops me. Look, even if there was post scent, we can't show it was poisoned. You don't have any witnesses of David perishing on reading the dangerous document. And it seems none was found afterward. Unless the jury are very gullible, we can't make anything of this. Okay, but suppose they are, though. <laughs> what if we tamper with the jury? Look, I couldn't persuade the court to take on this prosecution. Yeah, no, I figured. Thanks. Damn. Well, that didn't take up too much time, at least. <sighs> Bloody hell. <sighs> I really do... F I feel like the the romance plot I don't know I feel like this but I don't really have a strong reason I guess for feeling this way but I feel like the romance thing with the Carringhams it's it's a red herring just because there's no way within the systems here to fit the plot with the Carringtons into uh, into this thing and it totally makes sense that it could be about money Surf you know how surface people are about money but Yeah, he makes the point that it doesn't matter what we come up with if we don't have any kind of, like, evidence of the murder. And that's going to be an issue with all these. Like, there's nothing, there's nothing we can do to beat that problem. There wasn't any evidence. We would need a confession, right? We would need somebody who was willing to stand up in court and go, yeah, it was me, I did it, and here's how. 
and uh, something tells me we are going to find ourselves in short supply on that particular convenience. So what do we do then, that being the case? You know, I honestly don't know. I can't really, like, perform a physical investigation, right? My whole deal is I can talk to people. Maybe we have to just give up on the David thing. Pursue one of our other goals in the interim. See if we can fuck Mr. Pages or something. All right. I know how to I know how to work on that. Wait, uh Moss is not here, I guess, in the morning. Um Do we have anybody that we haven't censused yet? I guess we could do this. If we could get David saying something, I don't know. Uh, we don't have anything that's going to get us there without Harjit, so I guess I don't. I guess I don't know that it matters very much. This is sort of a more severe look. The Admiral's hat is way too much, though. Yeah, what that'll do. We got Harjit. It's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I'm satisfied with this. Let's take our man down to the prison barge and see what's what. Someone to see you, Archie. Is it possible to make people forget things here in the Neath? Oh, what did you have in mind? Well, if someone has memories they want to be rid of... Uh, thinking of the fall has always troubled you, hasn't it? No, it's not for me. Well, I can't help you. There might be a way to change the thoughts. But I've never found the way of it. The most I can do is quiet the nightmares a time. Okay, well... That was, uh, that was a total bust. Um, how's, how's things? How's, how's doings? How's digs? What's it like aboard? Uh, you're fenced in like a beast in the zoological gardens. At night, the hammocks almost touch. The food's no better than it is anywhere else. And you get a full night of other people's bad dreams. There's no sense in who's imprisoned and who's not. The guards have stolen more than the prisoners have. I am going to hug Archie. Harjit's going to disapprove, and I don't care. I put my arms around Archie. Archie briefly squeezes my shoulder. I'll come back as soon as you like. Tomorrow, if it suits you. Archie and I should never be friends. No, my feelings are stronger than ever that I would like to be friends with Archie. It's just like... I, I, have, no, I have no idea what to do for him. Am I allowed to... No, Moss is just not home today. I'm oh, sorry, this is... That's right, the boarding house has a different entry than the street the boarding house is on. Well, anyway, take the census with Moss, then. Uh, you know what, this is... Moss doesn't even know what clothes here mean. Happy Yuletide, Winnie. I hope you've not grown too sick of mushrooms. Uh, well, here's the thing, buddy. The Ministry of Accounting and Recounting have asked me to work on the census. I see. Um, I feel like we can just ask him straight up, right? Especially given how little these questions are probably going to apply to him. Are you married? I understand the terms, but have no experience of the concept. In Polythrim, one is part of a greater whole. One of us cannot be separated from all of us. And the king with a hundred hearts encompasses us all. Um, okay, well... You are all in union with the king, then? 
I am not unfinished. I still serve the king. To be finished is to be complete. To be complete is to be in harmony with his grace. That service is just a little complicated at present. He makes a noise like a sea spray weathering a limestone cliff. I came to the last city to ensure an exchange of gifts between the king and another. Ah, huh. I can sympathize specifically because of my jacket. Well, I will do so. I'm sorry. These are terrible times. Seems like a kind of a non sequitur, but fine. There's a moment's fellow feeling. Moss and I are thinking alike. It was an honor to serve my king. It is my pride and purpose, for I was made in his image. When I look in one of your mirrors, I am reminded of my purpose. I had a question, if you don't mind indulging me. Have you ever been in love? I don't mean the physical process. He makes a shattering sound deep in his throat that is reminiscent of two boulders colliding. Rather, the companionship, the desire for it. Uh, do I think I am? I think the thing, the thing we feel for Rachel is probably not like... I think it uh, maybe burns a little hot, hotter and is a little bit more superficial than I might use the word love for. I'm just go ahead and bounce this one back. I think Winnie is used to uh, not telling truthful stories about herself, right? Like the things that the... She's very manipulative in social interactions. When she tells a story about herself, it is like designed to achieve a purpose. I'd rather talk about you. It seems a leading question. Well, I cannot say that I have. I was raised by my king, he of a hundred hearts. I know only his love, all that he deems fit for me to know, and now I walk apart from it. A noise issues from a heavy chest in the corner of Moss's room. It sounds distinctly like help. It was his suggestion, of course. The trouble with kings is that even their suggestions sound like commands. A further noise follows. It is a garbled shout. Release me! How dare you subject a crown to such indignity! This is the sort of treatment fit only for unruly caps and truculent bonnets. I... what? Sorry. Not letting it go. Moss, what do you have in this box? Oh, goodness. I had intended to tell you, but... It shames me to say it, but I had quite forgotten I'd put him in that box. After such a long time, I had grown weary of listening to his voice. I do not know how it grasped your language so quickly. I must assume crowns are quick to adapt the customs of their wearers. I see an explanation is required. I have heard that every Englishman is an island, and on that island is a king. My home is similar, in that it is an island, and it has a king. That's not actually that similar, buddy. We gotta, we gotta get him familiar with uh, figurative language. My king obliged me to bring a gift, of, a gift of his into the previous city. It was to be delivered to an old acquaintance of his who resided there. They had a tradition of exchanging gifts. My task was to deliver the latest. A task whose difficulty, I regret to say, has only increased since your city fell upon it. For which I hold you in no way responsible. My king bore this acquaintance only love, yet plainly this person did not wish to be found. He makes a noise like a statue dropping into an ocean. The king's heart is so much larger than my own. Evidently, it is of such a size to accommodate complexities. Yeah, um... 
Well, I mean, you must be very trusted to be given this task. Thank you for saying so. The king could not have appointed it someone else, it requiring such an extent of time and distance. The box makes an indignant noise. It speaks Lomsbrock, the language of clay. The box repeats itself. I must object. It is not a connection that would have occurred to me. The box makes a noise like a knife on a whetstone. I did not ask anyone before, because, the, uh, because first the city was in a state of anarchy, and then another city fell on top of it, which made establishing a rapport sufficient for asking a favor a little difficult. A further indignant burst of Lomsprock emerges from the box. Uh, my apologies. The gift has happened upon a solution to my problem. It is a crown. It is intended for the recipient's head. The recipient is absent, but the king believed dreams might lure him out. They were a favorite of his. If the crown were suffused in your dream stuff, the king believes his old friend could not resist seeking it out. This clod is forbidden to dream. Therefore, yours will have to do. Would you be willing to help us and donate a dream? I... Yes? I don't think we need an innuendo here. Is this, is this an agree darkly? I'm not even sure really what that means in this context. Again, like, show me the words. Show me the words I'm going to say. Uh, you know what? I'm going to offer to help lightly. Well, whatever assistance you need. Your willingness is deeply appreciated. Allow me to furnish you with all of the details, however, so that you can make the choice fully informed. Moss opens up the trunk, revealing a crown that appears exceptionally old. He gazes at it for a moment, an unreadable expression on his stony face, before he passes it to me. Okay. There are always risks in wearing a hat with opinions of its own and also teeth. This crown was worn by my king once. You may whisper your dreams to it. I do not believe it will take advantage of this knowledge. All you need to do is recall a dream and whisper it into our horns. Then wear us upon your head when you next go into the city. If the one who is to receive us has returned to London, he will find us. If he has not, well, you will get to receive the unearned privilege of wearing us for a short while. You may not thank us. The tears we are certain we can see in your eyes shall suffice. If, of course, you want to do this. He makes a noise that sounds like a drop of water on marble. This is our task. I can find another way if I must. He says something in grinding Lomsprock. I wonder if it means there must be another way. No, I mean, I can... I feel like I can do this. I'm going to sympathize with his burden. On our way to saying, yeah, sure. Well, I'm sorry this has been a burden for so long. It is a kind thought. I am sorry your home fell through the earth and condemned everyone in it to live in a cave forever. The man will seek both the dream and the dreamer. So, will you do it? Will you take the crown and find the man I was sent to deliver it to? You know what? I will, even though I doubt I have time to um, complete whatever goals you may have after this. Yeah, I'll take the crown and find this missing man. My gratitude is... It is difficult to express in either Lomsprock or your own tongue. He is happy is the translation. Now I must be filled with your dreams. Come, whisper them into my horns. And I shall tell you a secret in return. I lean in close and feel the cold and ancient crown upon my lips. 
It seems like it is made of ivory or bone beneath the gold. I tell it of the mannequins I dress in my sleep, the way flowers fall, dripping petals like tears over the torso. In their place, mushrooms sprout, staining the rotting fabric with colors virulent in hue. Okay. Do I want to ask Hartred about this? I guess so. What a busy thing your nocturnal emerg imaginings are. I do not sleep. Even if I did, the king has not authorized dreams. But if I dreamed, it would be of territories not yet conquered. That seems the province of crowns. Well, the people who wear the crowns certainly believe so. Now, your reward. I know a secret about our moss under limestone. Who unworthily bears the face of our king? I love secrets. Tell me what's up. I lean in to hear the bronze-toned whisper of the crown. He hid me in his box for fear. In completing the task, he would find his way back to Polythreme. But with it so close in reach, were he to fail, he would be deemed unfinished. The worst thing a clayman can be, disobedient, truculent, incomplete. This is the second time. We've been talking to this crown for like five minutes, and this is already the second time we've heard it say truculent. Moss glances up at me from across the room. He is far too polite to admit to eavesdropping. Now I am well filled. Let us see about our missing man. Harjit may be useful. If my king's friend is lured back by the crown, Harjit may see him on his rounds. Thank you, once more. It means more than words I can express. And then it isn't long until dinner is served, and I... You know what? Let's just go straight to the table. Okay, and nothing of consequence happens. When the meal is over, I give Horatia a hand cleaning up. Okay, so we've got something going now. Something interesting is occurring. Two days remain in the season of Yule. Two days until, until the trial. Grizz leaves me the newspaper after she's read everything of political import. The headlines today read... Swedish Zailer's mission offers aid, sustenance to squid-faced men. Okay, well, it seems like, you know, that's becoming a thing wider, wi uh, more widely known. That's maybe a good way to put that. Okay, so... The question is, do I want to go out into the city with the helmet on first and then ask Harjit? Because... I feel like it was implied that the, the goal is to spend some time out, which will draw the attention of the guy, and then Harjit will see him, see him creeping around once we have drawn his attention. Maybe. So let's go, like, deliver our pages. Or continue my seduction. I'm going to press continue my seduction, and we're going to do it with the, um, with the helm on, I guess, with the crown on. All right, I might look a little intimidating like this. Uh, let me put on my hat and probably change my, my dress or my, my torso. There are always risks in wearing a hat with opinions of its own. Also the risk that perhaps uh, Mr. Pages will recognize this thing, know what the deal is. That's me, helpful and cooperative. All right, that'll do. That's a strong look. It is a powerful vibe. Do you have anything more? Yes, I do. Mr. Pages is pleased enough with my information to give me two pennies. Its existence is a scream. There will be more like it in time. Men of mud. My colleagues employ them. 
They do not always read or write. Not suitable factors for our ministry. That is enough of my official duties for the moment. Well, I'm glad you weren't away. Reduplicate thyself. Say again what you have said. Bring your mirror image to echo all your speeches. Grizz has given rudiments of your extraction only. At your convenience, we, desi we desiderate, desiderate, desire. I can't figure out what the other word this is mixed with is. There's a couple of things it could be, I guess. A fuller genealogy. Huh. It looks at me as though expecting that I will immediately sit at a desk and pen a memoir. Well, let's... Is he going to know if I'm lying? I guess we don't know for sure that there would be a lie in any of this. And he seems primarily interested in relationships between people, right? I speak of my family's background and the fine people we had the honor to dress. I talk about keeping to fine old standards and traditions, about making clothes so enduring and tasteful that they might be worn for decades. You have many distinguishments. It seems I have passed some test. And so. I feel like I've seen a side of you that other Londoners never see. Your interest in the landscape of the city, your concern for the census, your lexical tastes. And you are like a fair, fresh page with only the first written. How you would take the ink. Whoa, dude. All right. Zero to 60 immediately. How I would write in violent and you be unable to palimpsest yourself therefrom. What do you mean I prepare to go? Hold on. This is going great. We find we each have more to say. We talk a little longer before we remember where we are and how much time has passed. We find ourselves speaking of the fate of London and the changes intentionally made. The cavern of the Neath will naturally change it in certain ways, loosening the physical restrictions. Other alterations are drawn to the Master's deliberate efforts, according to Mr. Pages. The laws of marriage are rewritten, Inhibitions of affection vigorously countermanded. Okay, interesting. Mr. Pages is coy about how this is accomplished, though it makes reference to water and to dreams. It seems to find a relief in telling me these stories, perhaps secure in the belief that I will not understand them. When we part, there is a current of attraction between us. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. My feelings are stronger than ever. And we got some money. All right, so now we're going to go talk to Harjit. I've been wearing this stupid hat all day, so if it's going to draw his attention, it's going to. Or it, it should already have done so. Uh, do I want to show up with the ministry badge on? Probably not. Let's take that off. We'll replace it with our corsage. And I think that'll do. I don't think we need to make any other changes. Good afternoon, Winnie. Uh, discourage attention to the horned crown. I, again, really love to know in detail what this means I'm going to say. Is this draw his attention away by like actively focusing on other things? Or is this like me telling him, hey, pay no attention. Like, you know, you could you could interpret this as like threaten him if he doesn't, if he pays attention to the crown or I just really wish I knew exactly what was going on. Um, I guess I'm going to click on it because I'm kind of curious. Okay, it is in fact intentionally drawing attention to it. <sighs> Never mind the thing on my head. If it sounds like it said something, pray ignore it. The air is warmer for just a moment, briefly comforting. Harjit hints that I should say a bit more about myself. 
Uh, I don't know if this has been working so far today. I speak of my family's background, the fine people we had the honor to dress, fine old standards, etc. Oh, you have many admirable qualities. It seems I have passed some test. What a weird... What? Why are these interactions so similar? Have you seen a man who... You know, I don't actually have any idea what he looks like. He would be in red and gold. He would appear alone and say things that to you would appear strange. Hmm, my goodness. A talking hat. <laughs> Nothing gets past you, buddy. A talking crown. Of course, my apologies. This man would have been encountered only in the small hours, usually given only to the dead. Much is changed, but my master knows these are constants. Well, I saw a man in a coat out of fashion. He asked me a variety of strange questions. About Archie, too. It was near Shaftesbury Avenue. The walk is easier this time than some of our previous lessons. At first, I think I am becoming better at route finding. Then, Harjit mentions that the streets are becoming easier. The street signs change less frequently now. I guess maybe the city is sort of settling into the arrangement it wants to be in. The streets tangle. The lights are few here. A man approaches. A good evening to you. I find myself caught on Dusk's wing. Like a firefly whirled upon a zephyr. A pleasure to encounter another of Twilight's walkers. You may call me May. Pray visit no witticism upon me. The name has its origins in a place far older and sadder than this. Interesting. Um, I'm going to compliment his outfit. That seems like the kind of uh, the kind of thing we do to ingratiate ourselves with the fancy folk. Even in the dark, your coat shines. Red and gold and marvelous. The only sartorial guidance required. Cool. Uh, they they are indeed. He's from somewhere much older and sadder than here. I thought maybe um, maybe the question would be irrelevant and also possibly inappropriate to ask. I can understand your hesitation. The city has not learned to enjoy itself yet. We revelers can alarm. Huh. Truth be told, I venture out in search of dreams. This would maybe be a good time for that line to get crossed out. One in particular. A crown upon an uncrowned head. A headpiece which has a life all its own, yet is not free. It was meant for me, yet resides with thee. It was my dream once to possess, yet you have it first. The king no doubt suggested that giving it a dream unknown to me would lure me out. And it has, as he knew it would, though the giving of a dream has dual purpose. Both to catch me and to humble me. Only by possession of another's dream could I ever think of wearing the crown. And thus such ambition is but night's ephemera. The crown on your head says something unspeakable in Lomsbrock. I think it means it would like May to come to the point. Well, I think it is more than passing rude to listen to dreams without the consent of the dreamer. Stored as they are in your horned head, I think I'd prefer to hear from the source direct. Uh... I dream of silk and velvet. I make clothes I'll never wear for those who will never regard me. Ah, life is hardest on those who can least bear it. 
The crafter is always regarded least by those who use her crafts. Life is not kinder here. But perhaps you are already adapted to it. Your dreams are a delight. And suggest one day my door will open for you. There, crown. My head is unpolluted of whatever ambition I might hold in my head. The crown you wear was intended for me. I have been lax in my time in the last city. I lingered in dreams, hoping to restore something I'd lost. And in my absence, I have missed an overture to find what I was missing. I know my heart's desire would not have sent you at this. Ergo, someone else was sent. A man of clay, I'd wager one of the king's own servants. But he faced an obstacle. Claymen, as you must know, do not dream. My king does not like to make a task easy. Now, I must begin the ritual to signal my acceptance of this gift. There are much easier ways, but my love is a traditionalist. And these were written on the boughs of the Twin Cedars long ago. The rules of courtship, as sacred in the observance as in the act. Now, give me the courtesy of a minute. This must be performed in private. Uh, do I... Do I do this? <laughs> do I buy into this nonsense? I think, at this point, we've seen enough weird shit that I am actually kind of curious. I take a step back and give May the privacy he desires. I watch as May takes the crown and sprinkles something atop his head and then onto the crown. For a moment, I catch the unexpected scent of cedar wood in the air. Then he presses his lips against the crown and mutters a few words that sound to my untrained ears like an incantation. He does not let the crown rest upon his hair before he takes it off again. Tell the crown-bearer his prince comes. I shall keep this gift. The horned crown says something in guttural loamsprock that I did not make out. For a time, I will see you again soon. As he goes, I see him place the crown upon his head. And then it's time for supper. <laughs> I guess we'll just... Okay, I mean, we did meet a new person, although it's pretty difficult to feel like he's guilty of murder, given that we know, you know, nothing about him. Well, not nothing, but, you know, less than would be useful. Well, there isn't much time left before Archie's trial. One day left. I wish we'd found a way to break him out. Yeah... Um, I'm going to keep my mouth shut for the moment. That would have made things worse. I'm sure the constables would have found him afterward. And it would have endangered all of us as well, and made it harder to do anything through the Ministry. I haven't seen the Ministry helping so far. I'm just going to, yeah, like I said, keep my nose out of it. Give Horatia a hand with the dishes, as always. I know what I'm here for. Horatia looks in on me after dinner, though I'm not the one she's looking for. There's a man in from the night. Invited himself, bold as brass. Says he's here for Mr. Moss. Yeah. What is he like? Daft as a broom. Looks like he's escaped the theater. Or a traveling fair. Good manners, though, it must be said. I'll just go and fetch down Mr. Moss for him. I shan't be a tick. They do some pretty long ticks around here. And yet, in her dreams, sometimes she is a bee, 
nesting at the center of a great hive. Attended by drones and spooled in honey, she never need leave but her drones, my how they fly. Forgive me my manners. A delight to be reacquainted. I'm not flirting with this guy. Wake up. What brings you to the warding house? Well, not you. I am sorry to say. I wanted to see the one who came across the Z to bring me a crown. Speaking of, here, take it back. I find its habit of issuing proclamations most tiresome. Our habit, and we would not have needed to be, or we would not have to be so repetitious with our requests if you listened to them. Okay, well, I got my crown back, so that's cool. Odd sods, it is you. Your face is his. Oh, he would never have shared it. Moss makes a rumbling noise deep in his throat. You have me at a disadvantage, for though the king has spoken much of you, I do not know you. But some party, you must recall. Okay, sorry for the sudden cut there. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> what you said as I held your hand. What I said as I held the blade. Can you really have forgotten all I have meant to you? Moss makes a sound like loose pebbles falling into a fountain. I think you have me mistaken. I am the messenger, not the king. I don't really have a good grasp of what's going on here, so I feel like... I feel like encouraging Moss to do it. Like, Moss probably... Moss knows what he's doing. I'm just gonna stay out of it. I think our friend has something to say. Indeed. Much as I wish to know more of you, I do not wish to do so by deception. I am an imitation. I am not the king. You have his face, but you are not he. You were born to the clay, though there is diamond in you, too. A passing fancy that my love and I were reunited. Our grand love, won from death, finding a new act after long separation. But such a story as ours could not find continuation in such a humble place as this. It is only my heart's cruelest fancy that caused me to mistake you for him. I am the intended recipient of the crown you bore. A gift chosen for its cruelty, a representation of all I lost so he could gain what he casually discards. A cruelty I have earned. Indeed, I savor its every cut. I thought our tradition was ended long ago, yet by chance it continues with you. The king forbade us speak of you. He told me only what was needed. He makes a long grinding noise, like the erosion of chalk cliffs. It continues for some time. Enough to find you. But I know so little else about you. Even how to address you. I know what my king would command, but he is not here. He looks to me as though searching for the answer to a riddle. Uh, well... Again, I, I really feel like I should just stay out of it. I don't know what's going on here. You do what you think is best, boss. Hmm... I must think on my king's wishes. This task was given to me and no other. The king's trust is in my diplomacy. In such a long span of time for the task, any changes must be assumed to be accounted for. And thus, immaterial. Hmm, I am glad we have found an accord. When from out of the king's rule, kindness is so much easier to find. He would be furious, of course. 
that we find that we find solace beyond the comfort of his own love. To hate and to keep, his affection is of the smothering kind. But make no mistake, we are out of his shadow. Or why else would he cast you off, like shale from a mountain's shoulder? Abandon you to the ruin of the last city, and the fall of this one. Moss makes a noise like the fracturing of diamond deep in a mountain heart. How was he to know that the task would be so difficult? Nor could any have expected a city to fall while I was in the last one. Moss makes a reluctant sound like Sisyphus taking a moment's pause. Had he known, I am certain he would have summoned me home. The truth is such a bitter draft I've found. I am like you, Moss. I have served faithfully and been found wanting. In all these centuries he has acknowledged me but rarely, and then only to insult. He has made you in his image. You have served as ably as you could, I have no doubt. But you have failed. He has discarded you, just as he did me. He has left you alone in this strange place. He has known the fall of cities before. He knows their signs. And still he did not call you back. Uh, suggest the fall is no difficulty for a man made of clay? Well, that seems crazy, like a crazy thing to say. Ah. Uh. I mean, maybe. Like, I have no idea, right? So if I'm agreeing with May's summary of the situation is fully for the effect that that would have, but to be honest with you, I don't know what that is. Ah. Uh. Yeah, I don't really know. Like, it, it doesn't feel to me like I should be saying anything. I don't know why, like... It's not like he turned to me and asked me for, for my chip in. Like, why am I even interjecting here? I don't know. Arbitrarily, I just don't like royalty. Perhaps your heart's affections have been misplaced, Moss. Forgive me, but I have known you for weeks, while I have been the king's for a lifetime. A life of mimicry, a life of adulation, I'm sure. Kings can only interpret affection in the narrowest of expressions. I should know. But I know of no such affection, regal or otherwise, that consigns one to a falling city. Only exile sits in that register of king kingly conduct, again of which I am an expert. Would you both excuse me? He makes a sound that resembles sudden rain upon a mountainside. I am glad that you have received our king's gift. And I am glad my task is now at an end. Goodbye, May. Okay, looks like he is not buying it. Oh dear, I seem to have caused discord between us. It was never my intention, only to clarify his mind to the truth and make clear the connection that links us is strong as silver. This guy talks so much. Um. I don't feel this. I, I guess the, the, the top and bottom ones were obviously not things I want to do, so I guess we do this middle one, even though it's the thing I also don't really think is appropriate to do. I'm sorry that Moss was so rude. And you, his friend. It was hardly rude. If it were me, I would have set fire to the room and everyone in it. And swept up the ashes to pop in my pipe later. This guy just threatened to roll and smoke me. Well, I suppose he says he would have, given a situation. It's not a direct threat. But he is kind of threatening that he's capable, at least. It is not a surprise he is distressed. The king's conduct to those who have hurt him is generally distressing. The clock chimes, and like the cinders girl, I am without my shoes. 
Should Moss have questions, and I am in the mood for badinage, of course, he should know where and how to find me. As for you, whom he so clearly relies upon, I might myself wonder how he came to be abandoned, were I you. Happily, I am not. But I assure you there is a breach between him and his king. I know the marks to look for when the king severs one of his own. A good night to you, and pleasant dreams. Cool, not creepy at all. All right. Well, there was a lot, but it wasn't any of it useful in the least, I don't think. One day remains in the season of Yule. Not useful to, like, you know, any of our current tasks, I mean. As usual, I resort to the morning papers. The headlines today read, Blazing light observed at Z. Conflicting accounts from onlookers. Cool. I don't know, like, don't know why I thought it might be useful, but it definitely wasn't. All right, well, we are drawing up on the end of this thing, and I still kind of don't know what to make of it, if, <laughs> if I'm honest. Uh, but that is going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. When you come back next time, I suppose it'll be time for Archie's trial, and we will see what is on the docket as punishment for murder at this point. Because it feels like it's got to be less less severe than before, right? Given the fact that he, he got better. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. I will see you then.